Hey family and friends, this is Mommy to Wife of One. It is September 29th, 2015, and today's topic is all about resolving conflict and the importance of communication. Um, this topic came about because I've spoken to a few women recently who have had issues with communication in their relationships, and I actually had an issue in my own marriage recently. Um, not in a bad issue, and obviously I'm not going into details because that was on my last blog. Keep some stuff to yourself. But well, basically, my husband and I, we had a situation, and I always, whenever anything happens in our relationship, I always stop to think about my initial reaction to the situation. If my initial reaction is similar to something that I would have done when I was still a girlfriend, then I know I need to take a step back and come up with a different reaction. I'm no longer a girlfriend, I'm a wife. So my reactions to things have to be different because I have more at stake now. So with the particular situation that happened, I took a step back. I didn't give him a silent treatment, but I took a step back to get my thoughts together. Then I came to him and discussed rationally how I felt and how I felt we should, how I wanted us to go forward from that point on. And everything was okay, and we went to bed and it was all right. The going to bed part is key here because one of the rules we have for our marriage, which a lot of married couples have, is not to go to bed angry. And I think that that rule comes about because your marital bed is supposed to be one of peace and one of enjoyment. You don't want to bring any negativity into that sanctuary. So resolving issues before you go to sleep is very critical. They also say that it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And I want to add to that, I think it's also where you say it. In terms of what you say, be very clear with your intentions. Be very clear with how you're feeling about a situation. If you have conflict with your spouse or your friend or whoever, don't use a bunch of flowery metaphors. Don't be passive aggressive. Don't try to be real dramatic with it either. Just be very honest and upfront. Say, you hurt me. I was upset with you because you did this. I felt like you weren't listening to me. I felt like you weren't taking my feelings into consideration. Whatever you're feeling, just be very clear and upfront with that person. Um, it's also, again, how you say it. Your spouse, and I cannot stress this enough, your spouse is not your child. Do not talk down to them. Do not demean them. Do not wag your finger in their face and say, you should know better. Your spouse is not your child. Don't treat them like that. Make sure that you are speaking clearly. Make sure you are not yelling. Make sure you are not demeaning or insulting them. You don't have to do any of that to get your point across. Just talk to them, and that's it. It's also where you say it. Men, at least most men I know, and my husband included, do not like drama. If you're upset about a situation, picking a fight in public, in front of your friends and family, in front of your children, is going to make you look completely foolish. And you don't want all those people in your business. When you have a fight like that or pick a fight or whatever in front of friends and family, you run the risk of not only you looking foolish, but also putting your marital business out there on the street and also opening it up for all these people to give their opinion. And you may say, well, it's my business and you know, nobody should intervene, blah, blah, blah. But if you decide to have a private discussion in public in front of people that you know, even from people you don't know, you're basically giving them permission to chime in because you're allowing them into your marriage and you shouldn't. The marriage is supposed to be about you and your husband or you and your wife or whatever. So don't allow other people to get in the midst of that because all those opinions may cloud your own opinion as well. Um, one thing I talked about in a previous blog was not to put your business on social media. And I also, I don't say advise against talking to people about marital issues, but I wouldn't tell too many people. If you feel like you need to talk to someone, that's fine. But I advise against telling too many people, especially your friends, because your friends are loyal to you. They're going to have your back. They're going to say, oh, how dare he, you deserve better, blah, 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 blah. And they're well-meaning friends. They're not trying to break up your marriage. But if you have, if you're only telling your friends the situation, number one, they're going to get a negative view of your own husband or your own wife, which means that if you guys patch things up while you guys are good now and everything is hunky dory, your friends still have that negativity towards your spouse. And now when you all get together, it's going to be really awkward and uncomfortable. And also because your friends are loyal, they're not going to point out your possible contribution to the problem. They're going to put all the blame on him because they're your friend. And if you fall into that category, or if you fall into that trap, then basically you're not going to take any, you're not going to take any responsibility. And not saying that in every fight there's your fault and his fault. 
sometimes it happens that way, but you need to be open to understanding that, okay, I should have handled this better. I should have done this better or whatever. So when it comes to resolving conflict, talk it out. Be very clear. Keep it private. Don't do it in front of other people. And also, I suggest that you solve a problem as quickly as possible. For some people, as soon as something bad happens or it's an issue or you're hurt or angry or whatever, you want to immediately fly off the handle. I'm not saying do that. If you need to take a step back and breathe and process everything in your head and get your thoughts together, that's fine. But I would try to put a time limit on that. If you go to bed like that, again, that's that anger in you. You're going to bed angry. You're going to wake up angry. And the problem is going to persist a lot longer than it should. Most men, again, most, not all, but most men that I know, they don't see past five minutes, maybe the next day, maybe two days. They don't dwell on things that long. So if you have this issue and you're allowing that anger to build up in you and build up until you get all your thoughts processed and a week later you come up to him and say, babe, I got to talk to you about what happened last week, blah, blah, blah. He's going to completely forget about what happened. He's not going to understand why you're harboring this anger towards him and he's not going to take you seriously. So as soon as you can, talk about that issue. Don't allow things to fester because festering is just going to hurt you. It's not going to do anything to your spouse. So, communication is important. Be completely honest. Be clear. Don't yell at the person. Your partner, your spouse, or whatever is not your child. Treat them with respect so that you can get that same respect in return. So, this is the mommy of two, wife of one. If you all would like to follow me anywhere, I guess follow me, love me, like me, whatever. On Facebook, I have a Facebook page. It's B Nakia Garner. I post these videos I also post the written blog attached to these videos and I also just put updates on books that I recommend for children books that I recommend for adults you know any news about any book signings that I'm going to be doing and where you can find my book and all that great stuff so be Nakia Garner on Facebook make sure you guys check me out or you can follow me on Twitter at Lady Aqua and the number four and I'll see you guys all next week